tonight I have two friends with me. I have Chris Mulligan and Nancy Johnson. Welcome. I'm Welcome. delighted you're Thank here. You. So we were talking before about the fact that there is fear among people in experiencing or talking about the grief that they're experiencing. If I get over my grief, if I can move my life beyond my grief and start living again, am I denying the value of the person I'm <laughs> grieving for? So how do you respond to that? Must be a common issue that you encounter in, in this. It, it's a, a major piece. You know, there are many pieces of okay. grief to deal with, okay. but that is one. It, it, People are afraid. They're afraid of many things in grief. You know, the how am I grieving? Am I gr doing it right? Y you really? Know, oh, oh lots of issues, and and just fear that um, what they've been taught uh, uh, from other generations, from people around them. Um, uh, am I going to be ever accepted by these people again? Because c can I ever talk about my loved one? Oh. That it, it it there are lots of fears in grief. But the fear that you talked about um, is um, that we would forget that person, and and if we were to go on with life, um, how would they feel? You know, uh -huh. are we being disrespectful to that loved one? Uh -huh. And which isn't true because they're with us all the time, just in a different way. And and it's really hard for people who um, have a difficult time understanding right. that um, that we're all here together, <laughs> just in different realms. So, and, so when people say something that, that you do hear is, you know, the person has moved on, or they're going to reincarnate, or they've gone to a different realm, but there's still that element of them that is present or that we can call upon, talk to. My mother, whose husband died over 20 years ago, she talks to him every day. Good for her. Yeah. 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 And um, whether or not we haven't had these conversations, whether or not she actually feels that he hears her, I don't know for sure, but she is comforted by addressing him. She comes in the house, she says hello to the house, and then she says hello to Jim and mm -hmm. talks to him throughout the day. And um, She's reestablished her uh, and started a new ritual. Right. And this, this supports her. And I, more and more it takes all that fear away because unfortunately I feel m a lot of our society uh, operating with fear and do not want to be responsible for explaining the unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, resort to being quiet about it? So it, it, being reluctant to talk about the unknown meaning that they feel a presence of their lo lost loved one, but are reluctant to admit to that That's or feel right. people think they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. <laughs> and yeah, and so how do you help society you? and society. Yeah, right. So how do you help people deal with that fear? Patiently. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, 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 everything is a process. Life is a process. Mm -hmm. Grief is a process. Um, learning how to live is a process after that. And so helping people understand that they are not going to change overnight. Right. That they are going to be changing themselves. And, and change comes by, you know, being aware of the change and then noticing the, the changes and then trusting what, what is changing instead of, um, just allowing something to happen, you know, it, it's taking it down into your heart. It's yeah. opening the heart, not your head. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, too, is it's moving, you know, all of our thoughts to our heart because our heart is where our truth is. That's and right. it's, it's understanding our truth. Our truth is not our beliefs. Our beliefs are the thoughts we think over and over in our heads. And so we've got to move that belief into our heart. And so we understand what the truth is. And the truth is that we can see them around us. Maybe not visually, but we can see with lots of different signs. Ah. Different signs. And, and it's not going to be a sign that you want. It's going to be a sign that your um, loved one can give you, can is they, able to. Is able to. Exactly. Yeah, and right. one that you're going to understand. So it, it's not, if, if somebody else, coins is one very good one that 
a lot of people experience that they they will leave pennies or dimes in parking lots or on your table or whatever. And, oh my goodness! <laughs> and and a lot of people think, oh, that's a cool one. I want that. <laughs> I did. You know, leave I, a million dollars there if you don't mind. Right. That's just it. Dollar <laughs> bills instead of dimes. But I wanted my son right after he died to um, leave to move the peanut M and M's that I had left on the counter. And you know, I he, it wasn't knew I, happening. he knew I loved peanut M and M's, so I thought, well, sure, he's going to do it. Well, the bull sat there for a week, you know, and he didn't know how to move them yet. Right, <laughs> right. Know. But but this is just it. We have to be aware. And what we have sign to did he give you? He moved a um, a sun catcher, and it always had the words facing out. But whenever I would sit at the dining room table and cry, mm -hmm. it would just go around and around. It would spin. And there would be no air conditioner going and no heat or anything. But he knew that that's something that I would notice. That was the first sign. Wow. And so that's not a normal one that a lot of people might experience. And that sun catcher was important because he'd never seen it. But it was important to me because I'd just gotten it. Oh. And, and so people are looking for signs or feathers or um, different kinds of clouds in the form of an angel or something like that. Hummingbird. Oh. Hummingbirds. And, and they may not necessarily be the type of sign that your loved one is going to send you. It's going to be something that you're going to recognize. So you have to allow yourself to just be open. Open. Exactly. Absolutely. And sort of try to eliminate expectation. Exactly. Because that gets us in trouble every time, doesn't it? Yes. You're in a totally new space. Yes, I should think you'd be very you, unfamiliar. You are, and you want to hold on to the old. You're afraid of the new, and like Chris has beautifully stated, you know, am I supposed to let go too soon? Am I supposed to hold on to these? What will family think? Right. If I start laughing and having a good time, will oh, I be thought of you're as heartless? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you forget him so soon. Right, right, right. Quote, unquote, or her, whatever. So how do you help people um, sort of, I don't know, deal with that fear of what other people will think of them if they have a good time one night with friends. I, I think if it's something that you're doing that you feel a need for, that's legitimate. So how do you deal with the people who say, how can you do that? How can you, how can you be laughing and having a good time? This may <clears throat> sound a little crash, crass, but well, have you been there? Have you been in my shoes? Mm. Now you may have experienced the passing and a loss but yours is not going to be the same as mine right. because we're different personalities and I will handle it different. I mean, it, there's mm -hmm. so much, many differences, but mine is unique and I have to do mine in the process that my heart tells me to do. And do people accept that if you say that to them who are criticizing Eventually. you? Eventually. Mm -hmm. So basically you have to help people not care what other people think. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to help them understand that this is their process. Right. And, and what happens in a lot of cases, and, and I work with um, mainly bereaved parents, and uh -huh. what usually happens, well, what often happens in bereaved parents' lives is that the people who were their friends no longer are oh, their friends. Yes. It's very common because you have no way of relating to those other people. and and. It's not that their loss is any worse. I mean, we all think ours is worse. Of course, but and it is for us. It, it, that's right. Exactly, and that's why with each individual, it's their process that you have to help them understand. And so all of these elements of grief, like you're talking about, um, the fact that you can go on, you can live differently, you know, and to learn that it is a different way of, of living. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different way of living because those people who used to be your friends more than likely aren't going to understand mm -hmm. you now. Right. And They're afraid of you. Often, yeah, that's what happens. And, um, and you're living with your deceased loved one differently, yeah. and you have to recreate a different kind of relationship with them. And so you're recreating you, you're rebuilding a new you, right. and, and that's what people have to understand. Yeah. So I'm looking at the clock and thinking, maybe we should let the guides come in and love see Wonderful. what it is they have to say about I this. Love so see you later. Have a good time. 
and greetings, beloved entities. This is a very, very important topic that you are dialoguing right now. Because yes, as you, as you recognize, as you know, as you have said, it has affected very few people on the planet have not been affected by an experience that leads to them grieving over one thing or another. And so it is so valuable that you bring this to the fore in such a way and to have dialogues and uh, gatherings and not um, support group sorts of gatherings, but just a place where people can socialize and chat about and tell stories about the loved one is a very valuable thing because it becomes an environment where people have permission to be grieving. Do you understand what we're talking mm. about? Yes. So this is valuable in a group setting on so many levels because not only is it an opportunity for people to share information and stories about the loved one that is gone, but it allows people to see that they are not alone, that what they are experiencing, others are experiencing to some degree or another, and there is compassionate support without a formalized support setting. It is drinking coffee or wine or um, tea or whatever it is in the afternoon, a completely social gathering of people getting together to sort of relieve themselves of a bit of grief for a few moments and go away healthier and stronger. And to gather people in this way to let them know that they are absolutely right and normal, as you say, to enjoy themselves over something, to laugh now and again, to be able to conduct their lives into the next steps without incurring the wrath of others. Because the biggest problem that others face who have not experienced the event that their friends are grieving for is their, it's not fear so much, is a, an inability to know what to say. And so because they stumble and because they feel awkward and because they feel incompetent, that is why they sort of abandon their friends because they don't know what to do and they don't know how to fix. You see, your society is built upon being able to fix problems, wouldn't you say? Yes. Absolutely. Well, a friend can't fix the problem that their friend is having because nobody can fix somebody's grief. So people need to understand that it doesn't matter that they can't fix their friend's grief. It matters that they sit with them and let them tell a story about the loved one or an experience that they remembered fondly. It matters that they go shopping together or have some sort of date to go somewhere and visit or eat out or go to a movie or be there for whatever the person needs. If the person needs them to sit there while they cry, that is being a friend without being required to say anything or even do anything. Sometimes all, it's, all that is needed is to sit there and be with the person who is in mourning, who is grieving. That is friendship. That is being there for what they need. So people must learn to understand. You might want to write a few articles about this. People okay. could learn to understand that there is no reason for them to abandon their friend because they don't know how to deal with the grief. They can still be a friend to their friend and just sit with them and ask them, what can I do? Nothing, nothing will help. Well, let me hold your hand while you cry. Well, let me fix you a cup of soup and some tea while you sit there and wash your face. Simple things to just show the grieving person that they are not abandoned. That has got to be one of the most difficult aspects of grieving is the sense that everybody is abandoning you. And it is only through their lack of sense of competence. They just feel like they are, are not up to the task of showing compassion and caring. What do you think about that? Oh, 
absolutely. I, I thank you. <laughs> that, that is just so right on the absolutely. And and writing the articles about it. This is what I have been wanting to do. Um, and, and it will be very very helpful and useful to address the problem from the perspective of the person who doesn't know what to do. Exactly. And and that's just it. Um, I I was hoping not to sound non-compassionate to the grievers when I tell them that you have to understand that um, those friends just don't understand mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. haven't, mm -hmm. uh, you know, experienced the same grief as you. But you need to approach it from the fact that the truth of the matter is they feel incompetent it, to yes, deal with it. Yes, that's the key word. Exactly. There. Exactly. Yes, it is their it is their feeling of inadequacy. Oh, inadequacy, and they're afraid because they don't know what to say. Exactly. They don't so know. they need to okay. understand that they really don't have to say anything. Yeah. All they have to do is say to the person, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I am here if you want to talk about your loved one who has passed. I am here to listen to stories. I am here to listen to how you are hurting inside. Mm -hmm. I am here if you need to talk about it, to describe it. And I am also here if you want to go walk in a flower garden somewhere. That is all that is needed. So people need to understand that they don't have to feel inadequate, incompetent. All they have to do is feel compassion and seek their answer from the person who is their friend. How do I be a friend to you in this time of your grieving? Tell me how I can be a friend to you. And of course, there will be those who will reject everybody's offers. Mm -hmm. There are people who grieve, <clears throat> who don't know how to grieve, which is why it, you are doing such a brilliant service in what you do, who simply shut the door on everybody because they are going through their own version of incompetence and inadequacy. <laughs> exactly. Sadly, but true. Mm -hmm. So you can't help everybody, of course, because not everybody knows to seek you out. But now perhaps more people will know to seek you out and, and ask for guidance and assistance to go through this process. Because as much as people have gone through it from time immemorial, it is brand new every time it happens. Yes? yes it is. It also it, helps when the fewer in the society where this is fostered, when I say fostered, I mean there, there are relatives who have been through this process and they guide you and they work with you and they love you and they support you. And this is support if and helps you make, helps you get through the course. Indeed. And the one thing that doesn't help, that people should also understand, is it doesn't help to say you will get over this. Oh. Or you don't need to. <laughs> Either side, yes, or you don't need to. But those who want to encourage you to stop grieving mm -hmm. are not being helpful. Mm -hmm. They think that they are urging the person to live. You know, you've one done of the reasons. long enough. Say that again? They, you tell, they, they'll tell you, you've done it enough. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, when is it time? Yeah. Yeah. But you That's see, because you see one of the reasons when you have a ceremony and then people come and they eat food afterwards is to um, conf affirm life. You must eat to live. And so the reason mm -hmm. there are banquets after funerals is the affirmation of life and to remind people that there is life. But you can't successfully remind anybody that life is if they're not ready to look at that. So true. So true. So it's always a matter of finding out what can I do to help? What do you need? What can I give you? How can I support you? How can I be your friend in this time? So what are your questions? Oh, that was perfect. I have another addition yes the absence of the phrase call me if i can do anything because they will not they <laughs> will not they and no one knows what to do if you take you as the friend take the physical initiative either and show up do her dishes do their dishes run Ex an errand whatever it is exactly make Be, the beds that you've got it <laughs> 
because people who are grieving tend not to bother making the bed. That's right, too. And they walk into the room, and it is depressing because the bed isn't made. All of the above. Mm -hmm. it's a so cycle. come over and make the beds. Mm -hmm. Change the sheets. Do the laundry. These are life-affirming okay. things, and to do them in the presence of and around the grieving person helps them remember that life will. Yes? Exactly. So Exactly. Questions. It gives a positive note, too. Well, yes. Well, exactly. It's like the food. Mm -hmm. You know, it, life does happen, and if they're in their bedrooms or if they're um, staying home crying or, or isolating or whatever, they are not going to see living. So they're not going to have any role model exactly, for that. Exactly, or reminder, exactly. OK, I, I guess I have a question about um, the difference in feeling the grief and embracing the grief. Because how I have explained to families or, or to um, the bereaved is in, in feeling the grief, yes, you wail, you cry, you get depressed, you get angry. You, you know, you go, go through the feelings. But embracing is is actually not just feeling the feelings and um, pulling yourself down into a, a a more deeper role into the grief, but embracing it by um, asking yourself questions about what am I doing here or uh, what am I learning from this? How, how um, what else? Could I explain the difference, or how else can I explain that? When to a families? person embraces anything, they allow it to be. Now, oftentimes, people who are grieving resist their grieving, and you have experienced this with those with whom you work, have you not? Yes. They are resisting the process. So, in those cases, to say to them to embrace the grief is to say to them, let yourself feel what you feel. Grant yourself permission to feel it a hundred percent. That is embracing the grief because the more you resist, the stronger it gets. Yes, so the resisting to feel the grief just strengthens the grief and makes it persist even more. <sighs> makes it more stubborn. painful. <laughs> it's very stubborn. Yes, and then you don't allow yourself a thought that says. I could eat something that would bring me pleasure right now. I could have a conversation with a friend or a relative that might even make me laugh. So embracing it is allowing it. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Well, what do you think about that? I, I think that's a perfect way of, of looking at. So you say to them, say to yourself, I give myself permission to have this pain as part of my being for the time being. I like that for I the do. time being. I, I like I, mm -hmm. Thank you. Everything is for now. And tomorrow, it will still be for now, but the now of tomorrow will feel different than the now yesterday. The sun also rises. Indeed. So oh, it is very simple in, in the way that you explain it to them. You just tell them to allow, to grant themselves permission, because that is the thing so often lacking mm -hmm. in this process is in anybody, the person who grieves for a day, the person who grieves for five years, what is lacking is granting themselves permission to feel what they feel and embrace it wholly. And we are being told that we are out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely. Which always comes much too soon. So we bless you in your efforts and your endeavors, and we wish you very big success with all that you do and all that you give. So be it. So be it.